empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. November 4th. The authority of truth. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James chapter 4 verse 8. It is essential that you give people the opportunity to act on the truth of God. The responsibility must be left with the individual. You cannot act for him. It must be his own deliberate act. But the evangelical message should always lead him to action. Refusing to act leaves a person paralyzed exactly where he was previously. But once he acts, he is never the same. It is the apparent folly of the truth that stands in the way of hundreds who have been convicted by the Spirit of God. Once I press myself into action, I immediately begin to live. Anything less is merely existing. The moments I truly live are the moments when I act with my entire will. When a truth of God is brought home to your soul, never allow it to pass without acting on it internally in your will, not necessarily externally in your physical life. Record it with your ink and with blood. Work it into your life. The weakest saint who transacts business with Jesus Christ is liberated the second he acts and God's almighty power is available on his behalf. We come up to the truth of God, confess we are wrong, but go back again. Then we approach it again and turn back until we finally learn we have no business going back. When we are confronted with such a word of truth from our redeeming Lord, we must move directly to transact business with him. Come to me. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. His word come means to act. Yet the last thing we want to do is come. But everyone who does come knows that at that very moment, the supernatural power of the life of God invades us. The dominating power of the world, the flesh, and the devil is now paralyzed. Not by your act, but because your act has joined you to God and tapped you into his redemptive power. I'm going to say that again. The dominating power of the world, the flesh and the devil, is now paralyzed. Not by your act, but because your act to come has joined you to God and tapped you into his redemptive power. Wow, what a simple word. Wisdom over wounds. God, give me the ability to walk in the authority of truth. Scripture found today, James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. I thank you, Father, for that word. I thank you, Father, for that reminder. I thank you, Father, for your offer. I thank you, Father, because I accept your challenge to come to you. 
Father, we thank you so many things are prevailing on our paths today. But you come with a simple word. Come to you. And understand the authority of the truth. God is the truth. And he is our life. Father, I thank you so much today. Thank you for your beckoning call to draw near. In the book of James, he beckons us to draw near to God. Just as the priests in the Old Testament would draw near to God in the temple sanctuary. The priests would approach God in worship with faith and fear. When we draw near to God, the promises of God can become real in our lives. Peace, strength, hope, joy, love will begin to characterize our living. What does it mean to draw near to God? We draw near to God through prayer and worship. When we come before him with a humble heart, in submission to his will and with a desire to glorify him as Lord over our lives, we are able to experience the closeness of God and all the blessings that follow. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure waters. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22, we are given an outline for how to draw near to God. We are called to draw near to God in worship together with others who love Christ. The basis for this call to worship is the sacrificial work of Christ the Savior. We have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. That's also found in verse 19. And his ongoing intercession as our great high priest. That's verse 21. But how are we to draw near to God? The scripture says, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Gill's commentary tells us this about drawing near. This must be understood consistently with the perfection of God's immensity and omnipresence. The saints draw near to God when they present their bodies in his sanctuary. When they tread in his courts and attend his ordinances. They draw near to him when they come to the throne of his grace for grace and mercy to help them. When they draw near to him in prayer with true hearts and lift them up with their hands to God. When in the exercise of faith and hope they enter within the veil and come up even to his seat. And lay hold on him as their covenant God and Father. And he draws near to them by granting them his gracious presence. By communicating his love to them. By applying the blessings of his grace. By helping them in times of need and distress. And by protecting them from their enemies. The contrary to which is expressed by 
standing afar off from them. Now, this is not to be understood as if men could first draw near to God before he draws near to them. For as God first loves, so he first moves. Let me say that again. As God first loves, God loves you. So he first moves. He takes the first step. And in conversion, the changing of you turns and draws men to himself. Though this does not respect first conversion, but after acts in consequence of it, nor is it to be considered as a condition of the grace and favor of God in drawing near to his people, but is expressive of what is their duty and an encouragement to do it. For God to be pleased with our worship, we must draw near to him while meeting four conditions as believers. We must meet the first two demands, but Christ has already satisfied the last two. Let's take a look at those requirements that we must meet. One, draw near with a true heart. We must first draw near with a sincere heart. The word sincere means true or dependable. It is more than simply sincerity, though it includes this. Many religious people come to God in sincerity, but not in truth. I'm going to say that again. Many religious people come to God in sincerity, but not in truth. Are you truthful to God today? Our God demands both. A true heart is every believer's responsibility when gathering together with other believers as a church family. Therefore, before we worship, We ought to make sure that we come to our assembly, our local churches, with a genuine heart that has confronted our own hypocrisy and known sin. we we got to give that stuff to God so that we can come to God in truth. If there's a conflict that exists between another believer and us, we must take the initiative to make it right. We need to swallow all of this pride. Take the initiative and make it right, even on the way to the service, if necessary. That's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 through 24. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. A true heart is also undivided. The psalmist asked David, he says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? So many of us want to ascend ascend up into the presence of the Lord. But David said, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? Ooh, ooh, ah. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Now, let me say this again. The true heart is undivided. David in the Psalms, chapter 24, verse 3 through 4, if you want to look it up. He says, who, asking a question, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Don't you want to ascend and be in the presence of the Lord? I know I do. Ah. And who may stand in his holy place? There's no sin and no evil in the place of God. His place is a holy place. It says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. 
First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 33 mentions 50,000 soldiers who drew up in battle array and helped David with an undivided heart. 50,000 soldiers rose up with David to go into battle with an undivided heart. A true heart is not divided between God and the world. If you can't make up your mind, you need to go back and try this again. But it's holy. That's, that's not that's not holy, H-O-L-Y, but holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. Being whole, your whole being is dedicated to him alone. In repentance, David prayed. Behold, you, God, desire truth in the innermost being. That's found in Psalm 51 and 6. I'm saying that again. David prayed. He said, Behold, sometimes when you're praying, you need to address the thing that's going on inside of you. He said, Behold, Lord, you desire truth in the innermost being. The in- eternal being of us. True worship begins with truth in the inner man. That's the first thing that's required to draw near to God. Truth in the inner man. Are you lying to yourself and trying to lie to God? Are you deceiving yourself and thinking that God does not see the deception. Worship begins with truth in the inner man. Judge yourself. Examine yourself. That's what the word of God says. Examine yourself. Truth in the inner man. The second thing to draw near is with confident faith. The second condition to acceptable worship is coming to God in full assurance of faith. That's found in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. The first readers of the book of Hebrews were lacking assurance because of their waning faith. Their faith was drifting away. Have you ever found yourself in a drifting away place? Consequently, the growth was needed to increase the insurance of their fellowship with God, bringing them back into fellowship with God. In a later chapter, we read, Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder to those who seek Him. That's chapter 11, verse 6. We've already dealt with that a couple of times. To worship in faith is to come with a seeking heart that rests in the merit of Christ alone. Drawing near to God in worship contains conditions that every believer is responsible to meet. There are two more conditions However, but the word having in Hebrews 10 verse 22 indicates that they have already been met by the atoning work of Jesus. So Jesus has already met us halfway with the next two items. We are required to come up with the first two and he has already met the need for them in the atoning work and his death and his sacrifice. So the third one is draw near with a clean conscience. We can only come to God in sincerity of faith if our hearts have been sprinkled clean. Again, that's Hebrews 10, 22. The word sprinkle speaks of the purging of our hearts from an evil conscience. It is in the perfect tense in the Greek which indicates a completed state. You've been completed already. 
or condition. In other words, guilt is gone. In Christ, the believer's conscience has already been cleansed of guilt. If you're feeling guilty, you need to take that back to the cross. When a sinner comes to Jesus and receives salvation, guilt is removed. He said, Behold, all things are passed away. All things are gone. Behold, I'm a new creation. Even if feelings of guilt remain, the actual legal guilt is gone because in the body of his son, God judged the sin that caused our guilt. Did you know that God has already judged the sin? that cause your guilt whatever you were doing because hopefully you stopped or you're stopping and giving it to God it says God has already judged the sin that caused our guilt I really like that that's why I'm saying it again God has already judged our sin the sin that caused our guilt in the first place. Therefore, there is now, not was, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Somebody on this line with me today ought to be shouting and tearing up their room and rejoicing because that's just that word. Therefore, there is now. That now is talking about your past is gone. We're talking about now. Sometimes we as believers still experience guilty feelings over our past because some of us have done some bad stuff. Because we do not fully realize the extent of our cleansing. Do you really realize how much God has cleaned you up? Therefore, we must continually speak the truth of the gospel to ourselves and to one another. So that we will learn to live in the freedom that already belongs to us in Christ. You've got to speak that thing to yourself and to others. Because the enemy would love to drag you backwards. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. That's that hidden stuff. That's Psalms 103 and 10. Let that up. He is not dealing with us according to our sins. Or our past iniquities. The fourth thing says, draw near with a clean body. The word washed, Hebrews 10, 22 again, is also in the perfect tense, indicating that it too is a requirement that has already been met. Already been met. This condition, as well as the previous one, speaks to the Levitical ceremonies that prepared priests for service. And both are symbolic of the process whereby they were sprinkled with the sacrificial blood and thoroughly washed before ministering to others. Whereas the priests had to repeat their cleansing annually on the day of atonement believers now have permanent and direct access to God through Christ because we have been thoroughly cleansed by him don't you love that we don't even have to do like the priest of old that's why I say when people trying to carry you back to do all that old stuff washing and dipping and putting on the cloth you're, you're dishonoring God You're doing away with the sacrifice of Jesus, trying to complete the task in the flesh. He said, we have been thoroughly cleansed by him. Jesus said to Peter, he 
who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. That's found in John 13 and 10. The atoning work of Christ is so complete that it continues to cleanse us. Did you hear what I said right now? The atoning that at one meant make it becoming at one with Christ is so complete that it continues to cleanse. God is continuing to cleanse us. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, that sprinkled blood, his son cleanses us from all sin. That's First John chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. I love to say this. There is power in the blood of the Lamb of God. There is power in the blood of the Lamb of God. There is no sin that God will not wash away. When we come to him on his terms, to come to him by faith means to relinquish all trust in yourself. Realizing that there is no other hope for forgiveness. This is what God requires. Now to the one who works. His wage is not credited as a favor. But as what is due. But to the one who does not work. But believes in him. Who justifies the ungodly. His faith is credited as righteousness. That's found in Romans chapter 4, verse 4 through 5. When this empty-handed faith exists, complete cleansing becomes reality. Therefore, as believers, we must remind ourselves and encourage one another with an understanding of the fullness of our forgiveness in Christ. Without it, we cannot truly approach God in truth, sincerity, and confidence, and fully participate in the corporate worship of the church. Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Father, thank you for giving us your word so that we can learn about you. Thank you that you are loving, faithful, constant, and all-powerful. Thank you that you make all things work together for our good, even when we don't make the best choices. Thank you for Jesus who justifies us and makes it possible for us to have a relationship with you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us. Thank you for letting us be part of the body of Christ, sharing our burdens together to your glory. Please help us to draw closer to you every day in Jesus' holy name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Father, I thank you for my family, my friends, my loved ones, my co-workers and acquaintances on this line today. Father, I thank you because I believe somebody on here needed to know how to draw closer to you, yearning and desiring to ascend into your presence. Lord, who can abide in that tabernacle? Who can dwell in thy holy hill? You said none but the pure in heart. 
Father, I thank you that you are purifying us right now. You're giving us the spirit of truth, and we thank you so much. Father, I thank you today for empowering us today. I thank you right now for wisdom over all of our wounds. We operate right now in releasing everything to you. Everything that we've been holding on to. You online today. We release everything to the Lord. We release all guilt. We release all shame. We release even those memories that the enemy wants to hold us bound to. God, we give you love. And we give you thanksgiving so much from our hearts, Lord. So much. So much. So much. We draw near to you right now just for a moment. Father, we draw near, we draw near, we draw near. We come in truth, oh God. We come in truth, oh God. Hallelujah. Let your presence draw near, draw near, draw near. Draw near, Lord, draw near. We love you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your full work, God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that he didn't turn and run, but he pressed on even through the Garden of Gethsemane when the pain was so great in order to bring us this opportunity to just sit in your presence. You said, come sit with me a while. Come, sit with me a while. Come, dwell with me. Dwell in my presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that's dropping off. Thank you, Lord, for the sadness that's drifting away. Thank you, Father, for giving us the oil of joy for our morning. Thank you for giving us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That we might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord for his name's sake. For your name's sake, O Lord. We press, we press, we press. Just a few seconds into your kingdom. Just a few moments. We receive that refreshing fire. We receive that refreshing anointing of oil. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here on this line. Hallelujah. 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 You are a great God. So today, as I always say to my friends, my family, my loved ones, I didn't come over here to make you excited. I just come to give you what the Lord gave me today. And the word for the day is the authority of truth, found in James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. We're drawing near to God right now as we're closing. We're drawing near. We're drawing near. We're drawing near. near. 
So if this podcast has blessed you in any manner, we can be found on most podcast channels under Empower Me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. God gave me this daily word and gave me the name, but I had no idea what he wanted me to share. And then when he gave me the word, I've come on with obedience with an anointed word every day. Every day since he gave it to me. So I thank you. If this blesses you in any manner, give me a thumbs up, a high five, a happy face, a fire emoji. You can send me a testimony. I do answer back most of the time. If I don't see it immediately, when I see it, I respond. We're also found on another podcast under Drill Sergeant Making Jewels. Wisdom and warning concerning the entire the end time message that is going forth today and the issues and how the people of God should stand in the strength and the power of God. So I thank you today. Any of you that listen to us over YouTube and any other subscription channel, please click like and share. Subscribe if you like. It would truly bless me. So as we close, we give God thanks and praise. Continue to draw near, draw near, draw near, draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. God bless you. This is Sister Barbara, and I am also the Drill Sergeant. Have a great day. Bye-bye.